Hello everyone and welcome back to another session of Elden Ring PvP and another weapon showcase. Today we are taking a look at the Meteoric Four Blade. This is a weapon that you find inside of a chest in the Kaled Waypoint Ruins. I will have an image on screen showing the location of the ruins. This is a katana that is unfortunately not very common. It is very underrated and people generally tend to ignore it for the other magic katana. You know the one. This weapon is really good though in its own right and actually has the potential to have the highest attack rating of all of the katanas and by a decent margin as well. So it's one that you definitely do not want to underestimate. Let's go ahead and get started with the basics. This katana requires 15 strength, 14 dexterity, and 18 intelligence to wield, and it weighs 8, or sorry, 7.5 units. The skill of the weapon is Gravitas, and you are stuck with it because it is a somber weapon. And at plus 10, it has a physical base damage of 274, a magic base damage of 176, and it will of course deal 50 bleed per hit, the scaling on the weapon is a C scaling in strength, a D scaling in dexterity, and a C scaling in intelligence. So overall, it has really good scaling, it is perfect for a muscle mage type build, and it is good to mix things up on that type of build because it's a strength intelligence katana, what's not to love? Now on the PvE side of things, this does actually have a damage bonus against gravity type enemies. So that would include things like the Onyx and Alabaster Lords, Estelle, and the Falling Star Beasts. So it's always nice to have a little bit of bonus damage, especially against the Falling Star Beasts and Estelle. The Alabaster and Onyx Lords, not really much of a threat, but Estelle and the Falling Stars, well, they can be a little tedious sometimes. So an extra 20% damage definitely never hurts. Now, getting started with the pros of the weapon. The damage on this thing, I did mention it, it actually does have the highest damage potential out of all of the katanas. If you were to max out your stats fully, 99s across the board, this weapon has the ability to get an attack rating over 850, and will also continue to benefit from being two-handed given that it is a strength weapon. That is compared to the Moonvale in second place on it, the attack ratings, which is just barely getting over 800 and will not benefit from being two-handed. So this one actually is able to have a higher attack rating by a decent margin. Of course, not everyone will go up to maxing out their stats, but if you were to do so, this weapon does have the highest attack rating potential for the Katana class. That doesn't always necessarily translate directly, so bear that in mind uh, when you actually compare to using it in PvP, because with attack rating, there's, well, there's more to it between motion values and differences in damage types, but overall, it's a good weapon. It's a powerful weapon, and even if someone does use something like a spell-proof dried liver, with the high physical base damage, this weapon actually still is able to perform quite well. So that's a nice thing with it. It is heavily leaning on the physical damage side of things with its split damage. Aside from that though, of course, the weapon is a katana, so it has all the regular katana pros. It has a good moveset, good swing speed, damage just builds up very quickly because of those two things, but that's really not the big selling point with this one. I would actually say that this weapon is really great because of the skill, which is one that I undersold in the past. Gravitas is, in my opinion, underrated. It is a wide area of effect, and that's great. It can provide an area of denial, and if you hit your opponent with the shockwave, it will draw them in. So, if you draw your opponent towards you by hitting them with that shockwave, and if you time your R2 correctly, that unique R2, which is basically Ichimanji from Sekiro, uh, it will actually be able to roll catch your opponent, as you saw in the first fight in this video. Aside from that, though, with the R2, or rather, with the skill, when you thrust the sword into the ground, that attack also deals damage. That thrust into the ground, it will hit your opponent. So, you can hit them with the thrust into the ground, which will guarantee that they get hit with the shockwave, and then you can attempt the roll catch after the fact. 
So overall, you can combo it if you have your timing right, and you can also use it to trade hits because the skill actually has an extremely good amount of hyper armor. So that's something you've probably seen me do throughout a few fights at this point. It is a phenomenal way to use that skill. You can use it as the area of denial, and that's always well and good, especially when you do need to have your opponent back off if you are using this as a mage and need to take a sip of a cerulean flask, then that gives you an opportunity to do so. But in addition, you can use it in a more offensive way, and that would be to trade hits with it. And I think that is honestly great. I definitely didn't think to use the skill in that way until I started using this katana, and I'm happy that I decided to start using it as a method for trading because it works extremely well at doing that. Now, as far as the cons of the weapon, I would say that the biggest con of this weapon is the range. This katana is unfortunately a bit short. It's not very long, it has great damage, and it can do some good work with its moveset. The running R2s for a running thrust are phenomenal for chasing people down and being able to trade hits with your skill is great, but it is relatively easy for your opponents to outrange you, so that is something to keep in mind when you're using this weapon. The range on this thing is nothing to write home about, which is a shame, but it's also completely fine, and you can definitely deal with it if you have a bit of practice with the weapon. So overall, a fun katana to use, I love the R2 on this thing, it's really satisfying to land hits with that, and using Gravitas in the way that I do, in the way that I've mentioned, is a great way to use it because it catches people off guard. So it is what it is. Either way, there is one fight left after I finish up things here with the Legend, had a couple of great fights with him, thoroughly enjoyable, had a good time, and that's all I've got. Now for those of you who watched the Focus PvP video the other day on this weapon, I did ask a question, cow or pig? The correct answer is cow. I have the equivalent of a stress ball, but shaped like a cow, on my desk. That is the context for that question. So that is the answer. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you've enjoyed the video, then please do all the YouTube things for me. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, do all that good stuff. and. Stick around to the end of this video so you can watch this guy uh, Moog. Or at least, he starts to Moog. I, I put an end to things before it got too carried away. Anyway, thanks again for stopping by. I'll see you all next time.